Okay, so funny looking. Now, depending on... So fluffy. So fluffy. What you have here, like mine worked its way around. You may need to put some shingling here because the wing really just attaches at the top. So if it's totally bald in here, um, I would put, do some more layers of fuzz. But my my back and my belly almost meet. So I'm good there. So to make the wing, I'm going to use, he's going to watch me make his wings. Can you see him? A little bit. <laughs> I'm going to use the gray core. I'm going to use a nice, this is, this, this particular time, this roving is really thick. So I'm going to use a nice, um, about three, three inch piece, two times. And I think that's going to be enough. If your gray isn't this thick of a piece of roving, take another piece and another three, two or three inch piece and put it across the top there. What we want to make is a triangle. Um, so I can either shape my triangle in core wool, stab it, and then shingle fuzz onto it, or I can just put a little bit of top coat on it before I fold my triangle. So I'm going to do that this time, just um, for the sake of time. So I'm going to go with this light actually what I usually do when I'm going light to dark is I usually put the light and then I put the dark and then to bring the two together I put the medium in like a thin glaze where they meet. I want the dark to be at the tips so I'm gonna flip it over and I'm going to stab my center line it just helps me establish where the center line is. And then I'm going to stab a triangle and fold everything in all the way. Let it flop all the way over. Like I don't want you to roll it. I want you to just let it flop over along your stab line. This is going to be your fringy edge for attaching it. This is a good job for the punch tool. Gives you that nice blend. Helps if you unlock it, Sarah. A little bit like the candy corn. <laughs> okay, I'll show you again. So this is my top coat side. I'm gonna flip it over. You're blocking my light, dude. I'm gonna stab the center line draw my triangle off of that like I'm making a little arrow and then let these flop into the center like you're folding a paper airplane it's a poofy wing it is poofy. I think it'll help it fly better. If it's huge, it's a little huge. It's okay. I can just take a little extra off the top. And then I can decide, you know, how I want it to. Do I want it to kind of, do I want to felt it so they're like kind of curled up a little bit? That would be cute. So before I put it on, I'm going to try to stab it into that shape a little bit. I'm not going to try. I'm going to do it. So I curled it out. And then I'm going to use the fringe to attach it. It, it goes, I mean, technically I think owl's wings, they, they meet in the back. But these are just little, you know, our little interpretation of a little baby. So we're going to make it this fun little wing that sticks off to the side. We really like the Bob Ross of needle felting. It's your world. <laughs> yeah.
Make your happy little wing. Put it where you want it. This is why we create. And at the very end, I'm going to put a great big dark pine tree right up the middle of my owl. People who watch Bob Ross know what I'm talking about. Little foreground impact. I'm going to do my hair in a fro next time. Your owl hair or your hair? My hair. Oh. That would be fun. Oh, we're back on Bob Ross. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was I'm a gonna little find, lost. I'm going to find a nice big collared 70s shirt. It's going to be Bob Ross felting day. He do not do that. Oh, it's funny. <laughs> Like, I can fly. <laughs> okay, let's get this face looking a little bit more like the way we want. We need, they, they do have a little bit of um, feathering under their face here. So I'm going to make a taco for the bottom of the face. And okay, I'm going to use my off white. about two inches by two inches and I think I will put grits. This is going to get folded over so I'm not going to cut it and then just for fun let's add a little stripe that matches his little belly stripe. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm winging it. Good. Just making that like stick. That. You like that? Okay, so I gotta fold it over so that my core is on the inside. And what's fun with this is that you can trim all these little fun pieces. Basically, the whole face is built with tacos. This is a taco. This and this is a taco. This is a taco. This is a taco. These are tacos. And you just layer them in. And, um,. When we were here doing the Big Owl workshop, I think it was Debbie. Was it Debbie? Debbie Diener? She just went nuts with her scissors and playing hairdresser like she was, you know, an eight-year-old with a Barbie. And her owl turned out so cute. She just was having a good time. So you control the fiber is what I'm saying. Now, I'm looking at a little reference picture. And some of them actually, like, Kinds Ooh. of like splits in half here. Oh, where's my guy? Here's my guy. So this needs to go under here. And see, this is going to get covered. So just want to make sure that little coloring is centered. Should I be turning on your clear swax? Or not? Um, not clear, you know. Non yes, non-black. That would be awesome. Thank you. Hopefully I don't knock the camera and do something crazy. Okay, then we want to think about what color is the back of the head and make a great big back of the head taco. I could have thought about it when I put these off-white tacos on, but honestly, I've been doing it like afterwards. Like I probably, I also could have used gray so that he blended more, um, but I didn't have a plan. So, um, so yes, I need a big taco to put back here. I'm going to use, I'm going to use gray just so I have a little bit of core in there. I'm going to stretch it out nice and wide because I need it to go from here to here. And then on top of that, I'm going to layer, um, let's make the back of his head brown. So I'm putting the Paul Worth on there. And this is thin but broad because like I said, I'm trying to cover this whole 
whole thing. It's easier for me to start this on the surface than to try to shingle it right on his head just because his head's so a little spongy, a um, little looser than I usually felt because we didn't wrap. Am I in a good frame? I think so. Okay. Because I feel like I moved around a little bit. Alright, so make sure my pretty... This side I didn't fold over quite as far, so you see more of the gray. And what I can do is just take a little bit of this off-white off, because it's a little long. There we go. So you see what I'm saying? Like, if you're a smart person, well, I don't want to insult anybody. If you're more um, thorough than I am, let me put it that way, you watched the video before you started felting, and when you go back, you'll think, oh, I could use gray core on the back of the head instead of off-white core. But if you're making a white owl, you want to use the off-white core anyway. But I didn't know what I was doing, so I'm doing a little bit extra work to cover up this off-white. I always like to work with what's going to make my job easier, like in terms of blending and stuff. So like I would not use off-white core to make a dark gray horse or... Alright, probably need another one and I think I will... I think it would be cool I'm trying to decide whether to lighten up or darken up on the back of the head. Oh. I think I'll darken because then his eyes will pop. So I'm going to do a little bit of gray core again. I'm going to do some Polworth and I'm going to do some dark gray or gray. It's just gray. This is, should be just like called Taco Project. The whole owl is built out of this folding, shingling tacos. What's the most common form of owl on owl violence? Oh my gosh. I don't even want to think Very about it. Very dramatic. They, yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm changing subjects a little bit. Okay. <laughs> But have you ever seen koala bears fight? No. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. There's okay. Claws too. Yeah. Owl. Oh yeah. Male koala bears get a little, well, not so. So I'm actually gonna let this kind of go over top of his head. Like I'm not sticking to the back anymore. I'm letting it. Sorry, you can't see me very well, but I'll I'll get out of my own way in a second. Or out of your way. Okay, owl on owl violence. Is it like a play on a martial art word? No. <laughs> um, uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. I might have to scoot back a little bit. <clears throat> we got it. We got it. That's an unfortunate come over. Oh, guy. I know. Well, He's intense. really, really. <laughs> waiting for me to help him out. Um, I don't know. Uh, drive by hooting. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. <laughs> like if you get a visual of one owl, he's just like hanging out in his tree, <laughs> minding his business, and then this guy's like, whoo, and like keeps on going. He's like, what? <laughs> Who? I don't know, what? Do a lot of stabbing. This is probably why I have tendonitis. I don't. My arm just got aggravated from something else. He looks a little sad right now. <laughs> I kind of like that look. I think it's these, or maybe this droop right here. I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to say. All right, this is the fun part. <laughs> I keep saying that. It's all fun, right? Um, all right, Swax is on. And. I'm going to give him 
Ear poofs. We don't know what those are called. Anybody knowing the technical term for owl? Oh, we're going to get a lot of YouTube comments now. This is my own, very own kid mohair. Ooh, maybe your kit has this and you're a lucky duck. But I'm going to find a few nice locks for his ear poofs. Yeah, tell me the technical term for the ear poofs. Are they actually part of the ears? I don't know, Kyla. I should, I mean, my love. <laughs> you are. <laughs> um, I should know. I should look yes. these things up. I should do more research than I do. And I'm being sarcastic because I do a lot of research. I'm going to Google owl ear poofs. Pretty right. sure it's not coming up. I want to see what it'll come up. Why do some owls have ear tufts? Tufts. I should probably do the eyes. I forgot about the eyes. I'm like, oh, we're almost done. But really, we've got eyes. Okay, now I need to think in terms of this, um, this layer and then this layer. I usually do white closer to their eyes because um, I, you know, their eyes have this dark rim and it just makes it pop. So first thing I'm going to do is put a little fringe of off-white up against his beak. So I'm just using a small amount. I'm going to tack down the center of it right up in on each side of the beak near the eyeball. Fold it in half and tack that down, letting the fringy off-white stick up. Probably should swax the beak first, but I'm a rebel. I'm a renegade. I'm a felting renegade. And I think I can do it afterwards. This okay. Ear tufts. They don't know why. There's many hypotheses. These, this is hypothesum. Hypothesis, whatever. Uh, they refer to them as tufts, not poofs. Not poofs. And they improve an owl's ability to resemble a broken branch for protection and while roosting. I, I see it. I see broken branch. I see it. Okay. I'm sorry, I have to step in for one second. I did something, not on any of these. Well, maybe this guy. I added a little triangle off each side of the beak. So this is an extra step. It's gonna take a second, but I'm here to teach you, so we're gonna do it. So I'm taking a thin amount of the matching off-white core, little like one inch squares, and I'm going to draw a triangle, just like we did the wings, except it's little. And I want this triangle, triangle to be on the broad side. This is oatmeal you're using. This is oatmeal. What did I say? Did I miss? You said off white core. That's what this, I'm here for. This is oatmeal. To correct you. Thank you. To correct me and look up things that I am too lazy to look up. I'm busy. Oh, busy, that's the word I meant to use. This is a little, just a little tricky, but you can do it. Look at pictures and see how their beak becomes broad and a little smile even as it goes back. Okay, and then what you want to do is get rid of this extra. Make sure you have a decently well felted shape. Put the point, I probably should have done this before. <laughs> you would think I would have all this in order. What happened was we were supposed to make owls this past weekend as a workshop, the first people who were gonna do this project and it got snowed out. 
So my opportunity to have seven people try the kit and refresh my skills Forted. shot. So I'm just trying to fold this little triangle. Into this kind of like a folded shape against the beak here. So it's a matter of stabbing, really. Don't want it to go up onto the eye, so don't let it do that. And then sometimes you gotta come up from underneath. You gotta work it. All right, can you see what that's doing? Does this make sense? So the beak looks less like this, just like sticking appendage out. <laughs> sticking out. Yeah. So it's, if your triangle is huge, like mine, I had a lot of fiber to deal with there. You know, just pare it down. Take some of that stuff off. Let it go. Get rid of it. Because you can kind of see before you even put it on um, what you need to do here. I'm a little more awkward this direction. That's possible. I want to make sure I get it folded. Sorry if you can't You're see. You're more awkward. We can actually see better, I think. Good. That's my goal, is to suffer. <laughs> no, to, 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 yeah, it's fine if I'm awkward, but for you guys to see. All right. It's pretty good. Pretty happy with that. All right, now I can cheat this stuff back down where it needs to be. I shoved it out of the way. You really can manipulate this wool and stuff, so don't be afraid to like shove things around. This, so I'm gonna swax this beak and it is going to be happier if it's tightly felted. Swax likes that. I got a little bit of a too much of a line right there, so I'm trying to just fringe it out by pulling on it. You don't want it to look like there's a big line. Right, this is a little fussy. I'm being a little fussy with this. I feel like he doesn't look he doesn't look very baby. I'm not sure. Sometimes I don't know how they're gonna turn out. I'm gonna trim this bad boy. There we go. It's a little bit more manageable. Um, okay, so I think I'll do a brown and then a white. So I want to set up two. So I'm gonna use my gray core for the outer tacos. And I'm thinking about, it's got to go from here all the way around to here. So that's a good one, two and a half inches. So that's what I'm thinking about when I lay out this distance. I've got them going this way just so that they both fit easier. I guess I could go, I don't know, it's just easier for me to visualize it this way. And then I'm going to do um, Polworth on top of the gray. And I'm not cutting it now. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do gray at the top. So where these come in, they'll be gray at the top. So I'm not cutting it now because I can cut it after I make the taco. You'll see what I'm, you'll see what I'm talking about. Get one out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and make the taco. My favorite, my boy's favorite. It's nice to have that core wool in there because this will help the whole piece felt better. It'd be pretty bad without the core wool, yes? Yeah, it would be oh, way like floppy and flim flammy. And... Okay, then I'm going to put this from here to here. I'm going to felt this down.
and I'm staying just away from the eye because um, I'm going to put another one there. So it's taco madness. It is. It really is. All right. Don't worry. Don't worry. I feel like this is taking me a long time. I feel like I thought this was simpler than it is. But I think it is simple. I think it's just it's simple, but it's just longer. De detail is. <laughs> it is it can be both. both long. It can be both. Okay. Got my other one. Just like my other one. Another one. Just like my other one. Okay. Gotta get this going on. Oh, someone's trying to come out. You can come out. Who is it? Who is it? It's Talbot. It's Talbot. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Alright, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm, my, my voice is going to go up and I'm going to start talking to my critter now. It's just what happens. Just the way it is. Okay. <laughs> Do you see? <laughs> Something you got there. Okay. And remember, his neck's still <laughs> skinny in there. Just make sure you're not locking his head up. Give him a give. Him a... Ooh. Ooh, he's like a great big radar dish. Okay, so I can cut this, which I think I will. Um, except I'm going to take a little layer of this and bring it back on the sides, just to bring this together with this. So just a little bit of it coming together back here so you can see it better on this side. Little little layer of it come back. Covering that edge. Okay. Now I'm gonna cut it. Yeah, don't you think? A little crazy. It's a little wild. And I'm just picturing a nice, make sure I don't cut my, my poofs. I don't save cut fiber. I, we save almost everything else around here, but I don't save little bits of cut fiber. Then I can decide what I want to do around these ear poofs. Okay. Now I think I'm going to do grits, a circle of grits around his eyes. So crazy. So for that, I'm going to use oatmeal, a little layer of oatmeal. I'm going to try and keep this one a little bit more under control. So I'm going to pre-cut the grits. So I'm just getting my pieces lined up here. I'm going to cut them in half start with it a little bit more under control. Restack a little bit, which kind of doesn't matter, I guess, because I'm cutting it anyway. So we got this one. And I love grits. It's like this nice off-white with this gray flex in it. That's why I used it on so many of the owls, because it was just naturally flecked. Wax. It's getting there. Just have these enough so that they're holding their shape, but not to death because you want to stab them into place and for them to have a little bit of play. Alright, this one I'm going to go right up against the eyeball. So I'm really just trying to tuck it 
that rounded edge of the taco way down in around the eyeball. What does an owl with an attitude have? Um, I don't know what. Uh, scowl. <laughs> that was bad. A scowl. What do you call an owl with a low voice? Um, I don't know what. A growl. <laughs> That's bad too. <laughs> What does an owl need after a bat? Oh, you're just letting them all fly now. I don't know what. A towel. <laughs> oh, you would think, see, this is just, this is just That's me. That's what made it funny, was that. I'm so clueless <laughs> <laughs> that I can't felt and follow a pattern at the same no. time. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. As long as somebody's laughing, <laughs> I'll be the brunt. Oh. <laughs> okay, this needs a trim too because I want to see that brown um, to the outside of it. So I'm going to try to scale this back a little bit. And then if I want it to be less... Um, blunt, I can fringe it back out, but it's okay just to like chop it. He's cute. He is cute. I always like it when um, when I'm doing these and I'm filming and I'm trying to talk at the same time, and I think I'm making a disaster, and then something cute something emerges. Something cute starts to emerge. All right, we have two steps left. You're getting there. You're getting there. We've got. Um, eyeballs and beak swax. Okay, I'm gonna swax his little beak, and um, like I said, the, the tighter and better felted it is, the better. <laughs> um, so I've got um, I've got some swax that has you can use it clear. This has a little bit of sorry for my reach. Um, this has a little bit of maybe the um, champagne or the ochre pigment in it, which is going to give it a little bit of coloring. And you're just painting it on with the color shaper. And the first layer is going to seem like really bizarro. No! Try not to get it on your fiber. You don't want your owl to look like he has a cold. <laughs> so I'm just pushing this stuff out of the way. Like I said, if you were a little better prepared than I was today, you might do this before you put your face floof on. Um. So, yes, it's kind of a mess. It just, this is just the way it is. Whenever you're going to touch swax, give it a second to dry, to cool, so that it doesn't start to um, get all of your fingers. Because once it's on your fingers, then everything's sticky. And it's a real mess. Sun's trying to come out a little bit. Kind of just absorbs in there, first layer, and then the second one is what really shines it. All right, I'm gonna let that sit for just a second. I had one stray fiber, and then I'm gonna use my fingers to press it in. And I can put that little ridge on his beak. I can put the little ridges off to the side. I can make a nice tip and give it a second and then I'm going to put another layer and it'll really you know smooth out and shine up two layers usually on these um, larger areas 
think they kind of have like a ridge. All right, so the second layer will sit on top. It won't have to absorb into the wool. So it will be a little shinier and a little smoother. And I'm not gonna bother with the bottom. I'm just gonna hit all the top edges. Maybe the tip a little bit better. All right, and give that a second before I touch it. Do you like that color, Milo? Yeah, it looks good. It's very beaky. Yeah, I like it too. I kind of like it better than the black. Um, it's got the black. You used some um, wax paper or something on this on the. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can put some wax paper. I like it. It's like, I like that it's made out of wool, but that it's got this contrasting texture to everything else that's going on. Um, and it's still all natural. It's not plastic or, you know, toxic. Okay. Eyes. Are we ready? Can we keep rolling? We are very zoomed. Okay. We're very zoomed. We are. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. I had a, I had a technique, and I can't remember what it was. We've done an eye video where I cut the fiber and created like a caterpillar. You know, I cut the fiber to the width of the iris. Um, so that's that's one way to do it. We're going to do it a little bit differently today. You have butter, scotch, Gosh. butter, nut. And sweet corn. My intention was for you to blend these two together. Um, I gotta do a little bit more than that because I got two eyes going on here. And I've got some swax in my eyeball. Um, one of my owls, the bar barn owls have real dark eyes, so um, I don't have this dark saturated brown in your kit, but you could use the um, brown chunky core. Um, just to make his eyes not completely black, but the dark eyes are an option too. But I feel like the golden eyes are fun, so we're going to do it. Okay, so blend these two colors, and then you want to thin it out. Try to get like a thin strip. Does it take a ton? And then if you wrap it around your finger, the finger is a little bit wider than the Zoli Tool. Um, it kind of makes the, the shape that you need it to be. See, that's even a little bit too much of a chunk. So let me try it. Let me do this. Try to even it out a little bit and then split it in half. around my finger. Try to slide it off in one piece. And then stab that circle on. And it should give you a decent circular edge. It's really the exterior edge that you're after. Because we're going to put a little bit of black in the center for the pupil. And then even if you need to, you can put a little black rim again. So that works pretty well. All right, let's see if I can get this one to go well. Can you see what I'm doing? I had you almost just off camera, but. Okay. This one, I feel like, fell apart a little bit. I'm gonna try it anyway. Just try to set that on and try to keep that round outside edge. Hmm. 
We've never done the eyes like this before. Mm -hmm. Always learning new tricks. All right, so for this iris, <laughs> we're gonna take black core and we're just gonna fold We're just gonna fold um, a little pillow. Let's try to make a little circle. People are trying to work around here. <laughs> We're messing them up. We're so busy right now, it's crazy. Because our Sleepy Mouse video exploded. If you haven't seen the Sleepy Mouse video, You're check one it of out. not many people. Yes, okay, that's a little bit big. Maybe I can make this into both of them. So what I did was I just kind of folded the edges in until I had somewhat of a circle. And you know, depending on how dilated their eyes are, they can look different ways. They can look really surprised if you give them a small pupil. <laughs> like so. <laughs> Sun went away again. Now, getting two eyes the same is like, you could obsess over it for a long, long time. When I show people my animals, I go like this. So, <laughs> <laughs> see my, so nobody can see, focus. See my owl? Um, but owls, actually, you can't do that because their heads stay in the same place. Or is that chickens? I think owls and chickens do it. The reason you have sweet corn is because opposite the, I'm gonna cut this up a little bit because it's real long. Opposite the little eye spark, you wanna have a little highlight. I'm cutting this into thirds just to make it more manageable. You wanna have a little light yellow highlight. So if I put Break it down, break it down. If I put my eye spark at 11 o'clock on this eye, then I want my highlight to be at 5 o'clock. I need a single needle to target exactly where I want it to get the ball. And this can really make them look glassy. If you, you're like, that's what's so cool about needle felting is you're combining um, painting and sculpting techniques. I like to use the Serafina white for the, this is the whitest white. And you have it in your kit in case you really want some true white areas on your owl. I've been going more with the creams. Um, he's got, he's got some of the Serafina white. And you just roll a tiny bit in your fingers. You will have in your kit some bright white. It'll either be Serafina white, um, a white fuzzy merino that we don't sell, or um, a blended, another blended white. So it's going to vary depending on what we have. But you will have some bright white in your kit. Well, maybe I'll give them two, two eye sparkles because that one's kind of little. Sometimes they have one in their iris and one in their pupil. Fancy. What other bad jokes you got there? I don't know. That are gonna make me look like a that ding dong. Might, that might be it. Oh, I like this little owl. He's gonna be my best friend. We're gonna play games. What happens <laughs> if an owl doesn't wash properly? Um, I don't know. It starts to smell foul. God. <laughs> really, okay. 
Okay. Listen, one. listen, listen, Milo. One. Listen. Next video, we're gonna write our own jokes, and then we're gonna take a poll and see. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Let me finish. I'm almost done. If you lost your black rim, take some black core, roll it, and this is also a chance to kind of even up. You, you start going back and forth like, oh, I messed this up. Now I gotta mess this, that messed this up. But you can roll a little strand and just rim the eye again. Um, I'll just go ahead and do that. Oh, geez. This is what I'm saying. Like, just make sure you don't end up going back and forth endlessly because just you gotta stop at some point. <laughs> I'll, I'll rim this side too, but is he cute? Very much so. Milo, this was fun. You were very helpful and very funny. Well, <laughs> that's that's what I do <laughs> around here. Um, I, I like what I like what I made. Very cute. Very cute. Pre pretty tasty looking. Stay away. Stay away from it. This, what are you talking about? This thing will rip your eyes out. <laughs> it looks sweet, but... It, it might. <laughs> so, um, we hope you had fun, and I can't wait to see what you made, and I hope you kind of go crazy on your, um, on your second owl and have fun with that. Um, if you haven't already, check out on Facebook, we have two pages. My business page is Serafina Fiber Art, and that's where we share the Fiber Fairy who comes to give away fiber every once in a while. Who? <laughs> the Fiber Fairy on Fridays. Not every Friday, you'll, you'll see. And um, Serafina Felting Fanfare is our Facebook group where you can um, talk to other felters who know our techniques and have questions answered and get inspired and um, just learn all kinds of new things. And if you have a question and you ask it there, um, someone is going to put you, point you in the right direction for yes. sure. Yeah. Um, what else do we need to say? Um, SerafinaFiberArt.com is our website and that's where all of our supplies are. There's also a neatly organized list um, of YouTube links. So the projects are in order, um, beginner to advanced, all linked, um, so it's real easy, real easy to navigate from one project to the next. And every project, no matter how simple or how complicated, has its own um, you, you, unique technique that you're going to learn along the way with that particular project. So um, we hope you had fun. See ya. See ya.